Welcome back to the show today. We are talking about super tall NBA players and super short NBA players, or regular sized people. Something I've noticed since I've been an NBA fan is that people obsess over certain players. I think sometimes it's because of their play style. People like Nas Reed because he's huge and he shoots three. TJ McConnell because he's playing like his life depends on him. Jose Alvarado because he's sneaky. And Cam Thomas because he's a chucker. He's got the courage to put up shots in the NBA even when he's gone cold. But a lot of times it's a player's size and shape. If a guy is really tall, he's fascinating. There's just something exciting about seeing a guy with huge proportions and seeing how he uses them to his advantage. Then it's also fun to watch a short guy thrive in a league where everyone's bigger than him. He's also relatable because most of us would be considered short if we play in the NBA. There's also a fun visual diversity to it as well. Big dudes dunking on small dudes. Holiday. Phoenix has to foul. And a pinnacle ball. Catch it. Phoenix. Small dudes cooking big dudes. This has been good really in the last couple games. Dane losing. A refrigerator on the skateboard. I mean, that was uh, just a great job shaking. <laughs> it's fun. So let's start with a player that caught my eye recently. Yuki Kawamura. Yuki Kawamura is one of the shortest players in the NBA at 5'8". And when you're watching him out on the court, he looks every bit of 5'8", which makes what he does out on the court all the more impressive. Yuki went undrafted in 2023, last year. But this year, he signed a league minimum guaranteed contract with the Memphis Grizzlies. Good for him. Which makes sense because he played in the Olympics this summer and he was great. He had 29 points in a game against France with six assists and seven rebounds. The dude is 5'8 and managed to get seven rebounds in a game against Rudy Gobert and Victor Wembanyama. He's been the Japanese league MVP and he's led that league in assists. He's only 23 years old. I guess no one picked him up last year in the draft because of his height. Or maybe it's because he doesn't speak English particularly well. I really don't know, but he looks great in preseason. The main thing I noticed besides his height is his confidence on the court. This guy is a great ball handler and a great playmaker. His court vision is incredible and he's really fast. I wanted to see how Yuki looked on defense though. And it wasn't great. His size is a real problem on that end of the floor. He gets switched on the guys bigger than him, and even guarding on the perimeter looked tough, given he doesn't have a lot of play. Granted, it is the preseason, so maybe the Grizz will figure that out. But Yuki does look really confident against NBA competition. Now, let's talk about Yuki's fellow teammate, Zach Eady. Zach Eady is huge. He's 7'4 and 305 pounds. I think that's the heaviest player in the league. He also was a great college player. He was the National College Player of the Year two years in a row. He took Purdue to the championship last year. He was dominant in the NCAA, but he wasn't actually a hot prospect for the NBA. His intention was to declare last year in 2023, but he ended up opting out of the draft. Usually this happens when players catch wind that no team is expected to pick them in the first round. Even earlier this year, I remember some analysts had him going in the second round, but he ended up going ninth overall, which is really good. Still, you think being so dominant in college that he would go even higher, probably one or two, wouldn't you? Especially in a weak draft like 2024. Well, scouts were worried that his game wouldn't translate into the NBA. Sure, Edie can dominate at his size in college, but is that going to translate playing against some of the biggest guys in the NBA? I mean, there are other dudes that are just as tall as him. I'll be honest, I was thinking this too earlier this year, but he's doing the exact same thing that he did in college in the preseason right now. And it works. He's doing great. His little no arc hook shot thing that he does, that thing is automatic. He's bringing back the post-ups too, which you really never see anymore. It's definitely something that has fallen out of fashion over the last 10 years, but it's cool. I think people want to watch big men be big men again. The NBA got so obsessed with bigs being stretch big that they forgot the value of bigs just being big. So let's talk about some of the shortest players in NBA history. The shortest being Muggsy Bogues. Muggsy Bogues was 5'3 and he played 14 seasons in the NBA. You may think, well, I guess Muggsy must have just been a warm body on defense. Ain't no way he was gonna guard anyone. Everyone could just shoot right over him. Well, this wasn't the case. And this was very eye-opening to me. The way he plays defense, you realize that you just need to stay in front of your man to be a major deterrent from them scoring. As long as you don't get beat, the offensive player is gonna have a hard time getting a good shot off. And then an actual advantage he had being so short was that he was out of sight. He was playing beneath every other player's center of gravity. It was unusual. Offensive players weren't expecting to have to protect the ball at different angles. He was also very tenacious because he had to be. He reminds me a lot of Jose Alvarado on defense, where he catches guys off guard by going hard when no one else is. Then on offense, the speed at which he played was faster than everyone else. I'm not being hyperbolic, man. There is a reason that he played 14 years in the league having a three foot shorter wingspan than everyone else. Having a height advantage gives you separation from the defense. But you can get separation in many different ways. Muggsy used his speed, and he was able to create separation for his teammates with his court vision and his passing. He can make plays by drawing defenders into him and then kicking it out to another player. Offense is just about creating the cleanest look possible at the basket and then knocking down the shot. That's it. Do it however you gotta do it. Now, I wanna talk about a player who had a major height advantage, but couldn't thrive in the NBA. I have to talk about Taco Fall. Taco Fall is the second largest player to ever play in the NBA. Only second to George Mirasan. Taco 
was 7-6 in an 8-4 wingspan. He definitely used it to his advantage too. He got blocks, he got rebounds, he got easy buckets over players shorter than him. He had success in the G League and in the Chinese League where he plays now. He's led both leagues in blocks. You would think that he would at least be a solid, maybe ninth man rotation player in the NBA. But no, Taco has only played 37 games since 2019. And he only averaged six minutes a game. So why didn't it work for Taco? Well, Taco is not a fast player and he's not mobile. Everything in Taco's bag was around the basket. If he had to operate anywhere in the mid range or possibly guard the pick and roll, he was gonna get beat. If he had to take a jumper, probably wasn't going in. Also, Taco didn't have the conditioning to play more than a few minutes in a game. He couldn't get down the court fast enough for his team to start the offense or start the defense, really. So ultimately, Taco's strength was his weakness. His body made him too slow and clumsy to exist in the NBA, but his body is kind of the only reason that he got the opportunity in the first place. So I think the player that has had the most success when it comes to height to accomplishment ratio has to be Isaiah Thomas, the second one, not the first one. Although the first one was really good and he was not very tall, but the second one was only 5'9". He made two all-star teams, one all-NBA team, and he finished fifth in MVP voting in 2017. The thing was, at the beginning of his career, most people wrote off Isaiah Thomas. He was drafted last overall in 2011 by the Sacramento Kings. Then he got passed to the Suns in 2014. Both teams just saw him as like an off-the-bench scorer type, maybe like a Jamal Crawford, maybe a Jordan Clarkson. No one really considered him a starter at all until Brad Stevens got him in Boston. Brad Stevens saw his potential. And he ran the Boston Celtics whole offense around him. Thomas could play me. But his main skill was creating his own shot. He could dribble himself into space. He'd get a shot and it would go in. A lot of these shots don't even look right. Like how is no one getting a handle on any of these? This guy's a foot shorter than everyone. What's going on? It's because he knows exactly how much space he needs. His release is quick and the defender doesn't know when he's shooting. I also gotta say, he did develop his own way of dribbling. That really frustrated Fred Hoiberg, then coach of the Chicago Bulls. You know, let me say this. Isaiah Thomas is a hell of a player, an unbelievable competitor. He's a warrior. Everything he's going through right now. He had a hell of a game tonight, but when you're allowed to discontinue your dribble on every possession, he is impossible to guard. He's impossible to guard when you're able to put your hand underneath the ball and take two or three steps and put it back down. It's impossible uh, to guard him in those situations. What do you think? I don't know, it looks legit to me. Unfortunately, Thomas suffered a career altering injury in 2017 during the playoffs with Boston. That's an interesting and unfortunate story. It's in one of my older videos. So he never ended up reaching that level again, but teams are still picking him up year after year. Look how many teams he's been on. Because every team can use a player that knows how to get a bucket regardless of how tall they are. All right, thank you for being here. Thank you for liking the video on the last video. I don't think it would have done very well if so many people didn't like it, so I really appreciate it. Do it again if you can. Um, leave a comment. This was a suggestion. I reply to every comment, so yeah, get at me. Be good to your mothers. Eat a corn dog. Yeah.